Thank you for checking out this review video. So this is one in a series. If you don't know, I've been doing the reviews for all of the Creep Show episodes, uh, thankfully, because Shudder has provided them to me ahead of time. So I'm always putting these out ahead of time. Uh, if you're watching this fourth one, you want to see the other ones, I have one through three available. So uh, there will be no spoilers for this since I'm putting this out before the episode airs. So there will be no spoilers. Um, but I think that the information for people who are seeing it after the fact, you'll understand what I'm talking about. I'll make some kind of points about stuff. Sorry, my cat is flipping out in the background because she didn't get to see Creepshow. No, that's not why. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the first story in episode four, uh, The Companion. Now, this has a story by Joe R. Lansdale, Casey Lansdale, and Keith Lansdale. Yes, related family. Uh, Joe R. Lansdale is a quite well-known well, if you if you're a, if you're a book nerd within the horror community, you probably know who Joe R. Lansdale is. And when I saw this, I was like, "Oh, cool! So the story should be pretty cool because I know his stuff is good." And uh, yes, it was. I did enjoy the story, and it feels like Joe R. Lansdale. He has a certain setting he likes to use a lot of the time, and it felt like one of his stories. Uh, the screenplay was adapted by Matt Venn, or Venne, it's V-E-N-N-E, -N -N -E, I don't know how to say it. He had done uh, a story for Masters of Horror, he did a story, story for Fear Itself, which Fear Itself is basically season three of Masters of Horror that was not on Showtime, but on some other cable channel, I don't know. Uh, and it was directed by David Bruckner, who has done another one of these stories, he did the Man in the Suitcase, which I enjoyed, and he did movies The Signal and The Ritual, which The Ritual is a Netflix original, The Signal is not, both very good films. So the kid actors in this story did a good job. I quite liked them. I thought the dialogue between the two, too, uh, felt very realistic for, you know, what they were saying and their age. Like, they're young teenagers, so uh, it the dialogue between them felt real. It felt realistic, and it was kind of funny. So that was kind of leading into the actual, well, not the actual um, issue within the story, but one of the thing, one of the issues within the story. There's a few that play within it. Uh, there's some really good-looking nighttime lighting with this, complete with fog. The nighttime shots look really good. The fog, the lighting, and actually lighting in general in this looks really good, and the use of some shadows as well. There's some color that they play with a little bit, a little bit of blues, a little bit of purple. The purple in this looks really, really nice, and how they use it and how they put shadows within these colors. It, uh, it just looks good. It's got a very nice aesthetic. I really do like it. So for that reason, it is directed quite well, I believe. The camera shots look really good, too. Um... It's a real effective setting for this, I think, for the type of story it is. And the evil in it, I think, is also effectively done. The design of it is quite good. And, um, yeah, it's, like, kind of creepy, kind of scary-ish, but cool-looking at the same time. I like it. So they have s specific sounds that they use for the evil in this, and I thought they were very cleverly used. They were... They were the sounds used were very cleverly done for what the evil is. It feels very appropriate, and when you see it, you'll know what I mean. I thought that was really good. So sound design, very good. The music actually excellently matches everything within this. I thought the music throughout was done extremely well. Uh, it really helped with setting the mood, carrying the story forward. It's a, it's a creepy and compelling story, by the way. I... I do enjoy the story. I think it was a very good idea. And the other thing is it moves. It doesn't feel like it stagnates at any time. It has a very nice pace to it. At, at no point is it is it like I feel like they're wasting time or um, it, do, it also doesn't feel like they're missing a whole lot. Although I will say that I really wanted more. It, and that's kind of a theme with, with you know, just the, the length of the runtime for all the stories within this creep show series, which I've talked about before. I feel like they all could use more and I would like them to have more. Well, I guess not all of them. The ones I don't like as much, I just don't want to watch them again. But the ones that I really like, a lot of them I just I, I want them to, to be developed a little bit more. Like around twenty minutes isn't isn't enough in my opinion to really make me feel satisfied with the story. Even though like with with some of the stories, like with this one in particular, uh, the companion, I feel like it told a complete story within the small amount of time that it had. So 
when it came to the end, I wasn't like wanting for more in the sense of, oh, I feel like I didn't get this or I didn't get that out of the story and I need that and it didn't feel chopped up or anything, but it was just, I would really like to see how they could expand on this story and then make it, you know, longer and richer and, and just more involved. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the ending went where I thought it was going, by the way, and I'm glad it went there because it felt like that was the best way to end it. So as it was getting closer to the end, I was like, I feel like it should go this way because that would be the best ending that I can think of at the moment. And that is where it went. So I was happy with the ending on that. So, um, yeah. So throughout, that's kind of all I have to say about that one throughout. Pretty good. I enjoyed it. So on a five star scale for this particular story, for the, the companion, I'm going to give this one five stars. And this is kind of compared to all, you know, the creep show stuff. Uh, with half stars in play, I'm going to go uh, for a three and a half. I'm going to do a three and a half star on this one. It was pretty good. Enjoyed it. So then we go to the second one. And this one was Lydia Lane's Better Half. Now, the story for this came from John Harrison and Greg Nicotero, who have been involved with some of the other stories. John Harrison, he did the All Hallows Eve one. I think he directed that one. And he directed The House of the Head. He has done some directing for Tales from the Dark Side and Tales from the Crypt. So he's all about these anthologies. Uh, and then Greg Nicotero, people know lots of things Greg, Greg Nicotero's done. But within this Creepshow series, he directed The Finger and he directed Grey Matter, which I didn't really like the Grey Matter all that much. Really liked The Finger. So uh, this, is, this one was directed by Roxanne Benjamin, who did the film Southbound, XX, and Body at Brighton Rock, which I've not seen any of those, although XX has been on my to-watch list for a while. I've heard good things. I believe that one is an anthology film. I think it's anthology. I might be wrong, but I think so. So the acting for this one is pretty solid. The directing is good as well. It looks really good. Uh, cinematography is nice. I think the music is quite appropriate for what's going on here. So there are a lot of good technical things coming together with this. There's an underlying theme within it uh, that I think will resonate with a lot of people, especially the working folks who watch this. Uh, I immediately picked up on something that I was just like, yeah, I kind of identify a little bit with, with, with something in this. And you, you'll know what I'm talking about when you've seen it. Uh, it has a definite now what type of moment early on that keeps you interested, uh, at least initially to kind of be like, okay, that happened, now what happens? Like, not in a bad sense of like, oh, you did that, now what are you going to do? But in the sense of, that happened, now let's see what happens. What are you going to do now? So, I did like that. It was a good setup. There's some good choice of words in this, actually, when it comes to the dialogue that are meant to be kind of these funny little subtle puns. Uh, if you're paying attention to... Well, you are paying attention to it, but it's a funny thing because the characters don't get it, but you as the audience get it. That's kind of what I meant to say. So I like those kinds of moments where they, they have these little unintentional, the characters have unintentional puns that the audience is like, ah, ha, ha, that's kind of funny for the situation right now. So I like that. Uh, for everyone who saw this, okay, so this is a thing for everyone who saw this, but it's not really a spoiler. You'll know what I'm talking about. There would have been a trail showing what happened. So think about that. If you've seen it, you you should know what I'm talking about. There would have been a trail to show what happened here, okay? Uh, which is kind of something that someone didn't think of. And I'll leave it at that. Now, if you don't know what that is, go watch the episode when it's available. Come back, and or you'll just get it then. You'll understand what I'm talking about, most likely. It's a bit slow and boring. Gotta be honest, uh, not throughout, like I was saying, the beginning is a good setup and it get, it kind of piques your interest, but it does kind of feel like they're wasting time at some point here. Uh, like I said, technically it's got a lot of things going, but uh, the pacing gets really bad about halfway through all the way up to the end, in my opinion, and uh, it just feels like they're wasting time. And when it's about 20 minutes long, you shouldn't be trying to waste time. It kind of seems like it's one of those ones where there was a story idea, and it just didn't have the length. 
I mean, you, th there was there is a way to make it have the length, but the way that it was formulated, it just didn't have the length to it. So it felt like they were just doing some longer shots. They were wasting some time trying to get to that final runtime, and that sucks for something that's so slow, in my opinion. I, I was not a fan. Uh, I said the music works really well. I already had that. Uh, there's a moment that made me chuckle, actually, because it's a really bad situation to be in within the context of the story. So to go along with that kind of dialogue thing I was talking about where I like that unintentional pun with the characters, I also like these moments where something really bad happens. It's like kind of worst case scenario within what's going on. And you as the audience really get that, but the person in there doesn't get it at the time or does get it and to them it's like terrible and dreadful and to you it's just kind of funny so i kind of chuckled at one of those moments so i did like that uh there's something at the end that they cut away from that they definitely should have had happen on screen that sort of stuff drives me crazy that's the kind of stuff that they have delivered on with some of the episodes in this in this uh series and they should have delivered on within this story um you know i i understand maybe why they didn't because of the final shot the final scene in the story that maybe they didn't want to give too much away leading up to that but i don't know i just think it should have happened on screen don't cut away from it don't shy away because that's what this is about you have great practical effects and you can see them in a lot of these so use it please uh and then the final shot the final shot looks really good. I really, really like the final shot. It's a very cool looking shot. It's framed very well. It's set up super well. The directing on this is nice. And um, it's a good way to just stop the story. But my problem is overall, I wasn't a huge fan of the story because like I said, I felt like there was a decent concept there, but it just seems like there wasn't enough actual story there to meet the runtime, which is small. So that's a problem. So anyway, um... Lydia Lane's better half. What do I give this? Out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give this one a two. I'm going to give it a two because they're actually, it's not the worst. There's actually some good stuff about it. You heard it. So, you know, just saying. All right. So let me go ahead, like I've been doing at the end of these videos, and give you my full ranking on how I'm feeling about all the stories thus far. So of the eight stories, number eight, All Hallows' Eve. Number seven, Lydia Lane's Better Half. Number six, Gray Matter. Number five, Bad Wolf Down. Number four, The Companion. Number three, The Man in the Suitcase. Number two, House of the Head. And number one, The Finger. So I'm going to keep doing that, and then I might actually do a final video at the very, very end, just kind of going over my final ranking of all 12 and just kind of talking a little bit about each one. But... Stick with me on these videos. Thank you everyone for who is checking it out. If you like these videos and any other videos I do, hit that subscribe and help me out. Really appreciate that. Uh, takes you like literally a second and it's painless, but it can mean a lot to me and I would appreciate that. But thank you so much and until next time, keep it brutal.